Why, thank you, Odie. This is going to be the best Christmas tree we've ever had. Right, Garfield? Well, that depends. It depends on what's under it. In fact, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. I've invited Mom, Dad, and Doc Boy over for dinner tonight. Liz is coming too, and she's bringing her parents. Oh, is there going to be enough food? Now, I want you to be on your best behavior, Garfield. You didn't exactly win Mrs. Wilson over when you let her canary Petey out the window. Mr. Wilson seemed pleased. Oh no, look at the time. We have to go to the grocery. Garfield, help Odie finish decorating the tree while I do the shopping list. <sighs> Must I do everything around here? Oh, very well. Odie, slide that box of decorations over here. A little closer. Good, now stand back. <laughs> Now plug it in. No time to finish the tree. We have to run to the... Ta -da! Like they say, lazy is the mother of invention. You boys wait here. I'll be right back. Well, don't be long. You know how impatient I get when there's food in the vicinity. Oh, hi, Arlene. Hi, Garfield. What you doing? I'm gathering food and blankets for some abandoned animals at the old railway station. My, that looks heavy. Yes, it is. Bummer. Well, John's fixing a feast for the family tonight, and someone's going to be doing some major eating. No. Oh. And then tomorrow's Christmas, and we're going to open presents. And then we're going to be eating. And then we're going to open more presents. And then more eating and opening presents. Hey, where are you going? I had two more eating and opening of presents to go. You don't get it, do you? Get what? What the spirit of Christmas is all about. Well, there's the eating, and there's the opening of presents, and then there's... What, there's more? Yes, there's the caring and sharing. Ah, gotcha. Oh. Okay, you can come to dinner too. There's plenty to eat. And Odie will be happy to share his. You are so pathetic. Whoa. Now what? I invited you to dinner. If you want to truly understand what I'm talking about, come with me. There are those who are in need of shelter and food. Helping them is a good thing to do, especially this time of year. Hey, guys, let's hurry. It's cold out here. Well, I gotta go. If I don't see you, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Garfield. What? You know, Odie, I kind of feel like a heel. Maybe I should have helped Arlene care for those animals, but hey, what can I do? I'm only one cat. I'm only human. Huh? It's not like I can just take John's food down to the old railway station, right? Uh -huh. Will you stop that? Huddle up, people. There are a lot of you and not a lot of blanking. You know, Rags, I've always taken this whole heat thing for granted. <laughs> we take everything for granted until it's gone. Like food. <laughs> like food. I'm back. Woohoo! Arlene, what did you bring us? Well, 
the dumpster behind the store wasn't as generous today, but I did find this. Ooh, that looks soft. Oh. It looks so pretty. What do you have to eat? I'm starving. I'm afraid all I have is a little cheese and some biscuits. Oh. That's okay. You guys eat. I could stand to drop a few pounds. We don't have enough food to go around. What do we do? We aren't going to eat the food, Harry. You and I will have a nice meal when we get home tonight. This is for the animals who have no home. Ah, you're right. Now tell my tummy that. Or better yet, tell your fat friend that. Garfield? Who else? I'll bet he has a boatload of food around his house. We could live for a week on what he eats for a snack. I'm afraid Garfield isn't in the sharing mood this holiday season. Heh, <laughs> like he ever was. Well, as they say, a fat friend in need is a fat friend in need. Yeah. You didn't take John's dinner fixings, did you? Oh, no. We took stuff from the back of the refrigerator. That food hasn't seen the light of day for years. Oh, you are such a sweetie. Thank you, Garfield. <laughs> and you too, Odie. Are we quite done with the smooch fest? We have some hungry friends here. Garfield, Odie, I'd like you to meet Rags. He's been a resident of the railway station for many years now. You don't have a home? How do you survive? I have always relied upon the kindness of strangers. Where would you want to do that? Oh, I'd love to have a home. But nobody wants a big old dog. People want puppies and kittens. Right, guys! Whoa! Who are the kittens? <laughs> Their mother was an alley cat. She felt very ill, and it was her last wish that I care for her kittens until they found good homes. Garfield, Odie, I'd like you to meet Spring. Hi. Summer. <laughs> Sup, dog. And Autumn. How do you do? There are three of you? There are four. We had a brother, but he has already found a home. Spring, summer, and autumn. Let me guess. Would his name by any chance be Winter? No, it's Philippe. Winter. <laughs> What's wrong with that? What a dorky name. We have one more resident for you to meet, Garfield. Where? There. This is Nick. Oh, how do you do, Nick? Nick, be nice. I don't make nice with cats. Cats eat canaries. Only the mouthy ones. Hey, hey, that's it. Put them up. Put them up. Gladly. Uh, uh, boys, let's not forget why we're here. You're lucky she called me up, Fetzo. Hey, pick on someone your own size. Thank you, Arlene. For what? For encouraging us to help these folks out. It feels good. Who would have thought? It's a nice start. Isn't that true? We should find homes for them. Well, that's a pretty tall order. If people got to know them, I just know they'd want to take them home. But that's the problem. How do you get everybody together? <laughs> What is it, Odie? A junkyard. Okay, so what's your point? Junkyard, pile of junk, okay. <gasps> Oh, I get it. If we build a Christmas tree, people will come, like moss to a light. <laughs> and then, 
They'll meet the animals. And give them homes. Yes! You guys are nuts. Carlene, remind me to tell you about the true spirit of Christmas sometime. Huh? It's okay, I think you're a genius, Odie. Odie, you're a genius. They be. It's not like Garfield to be gone this close to dinner time. Oh no! Company's here! Garfield! Odie! Huh? <laughs> Mom! Dad! Merry oh. Christmas, John! Son? Doc Boy! Don't call me Doc Boy. <laughs> right. Doc Boy, Doc Boy. <laughs> Liz! Mm. Happy holidays, John. Boy, you are looking absolutely... <laughs> Mrs. Wilson! Hello, John. And Mr. Wilson, uh, how are you today, sir? Just peachy. Which way to the eggnog? Oh. What a beautiful treat, John. Uh, thanks. Um... Mom, Dad, Doc Boy, I'd like you to meet Liz's parents, uh, Robert and Betty. Hi. Well, how do you do? I'm fine, thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Liz has told us so much about you. So, uh, everyone have some hot cider and let's admire the tree for a while, okay? I'm kind of hungry. Yeah, I'm with that one. When do we eat? Robert. Oh, soon. Uh, but first, let's get to know one another. Oh, Mrs. Wilson, did you know Doc Boy slept with his blankie until he was 14? <laughs> Don't call me Doc Boy. And it was 13. <laughs> what do you think, Arlene? Interesting, but it needs something. A star. We need a star at the top. Eureka! Nice going, Odie. Let's get this thing to the top of the heap. I think everything's ready to go now. Are you sure this is going to work? Absolutely not. Are you with me, people? Yes! Very nice, everyone. Okay, uh, let's sing another song. Oh. Do we have to? We've been singing for a solid hour. Uh, John, can I give you a hand with dinner? No, everything's ready, Mom. I was just stalling until Garfield and Odie show up. Oh, no. It's not like Garfield to miss a meal. Wondered why it was so peaceful around here. I'm sure they're fine. Those rascals are probably up to something. I'm sure you're right. Okay, let's go into dinner. <gasps> what a lovely dinner, John. I'm so proud of you. If it tastes half as good as it looks, 
We're in for a treat. What was that? Huh? Uh, what was what? That noise came from the living room. I didn't hear anything. What the? Oh. I don't believe it. What's going on here? Oh, oh no. This isn't happening. Stop. Go forward, guys. The headlights have to shine higher. Wow. Well, folks, I guess our Christmas is over a little early. I'm sorry. Much time. <laughs> Everybody ready? here. It was a nice idea, Garfield. It was sweet of you to try. Hello? Oh, yeah, it works! Hey, it worked. See, I told you. <laughs> Garfield! Odie! You rascals! What are you doing here? This is truly a Christmas miracle. It must be for a reason. As a matter of fact, it is. Oh. Who are your friends, Garfield? <gasps> Petey! What? Oh, boy. I had a canary named Petey. You remind me so much of him. I'm going to take you home and name you Petey, too. Look, lady, I don't know what your problem is, but, uh, is that food? Oh, have some macadamia nuts. For macadamia nuts, you can call me Cynthia. And Garfield. Here I was so angry with you for letting Petey out the window, and now you've given me Petey, too. Ooh. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Can I have some more nuts? And just who are you? Yeah. Don't you have a home? Uh, well, they need a home, Dad. A uh, farm can always use more mousers. We can take the kittens. I love kittens. You're coming home with us. I don't think so, lady. We're not going anywhere without rags. We're a family, a team, a set that can't be broken up. Time out. Come here, ladies. Listen to me. I promised your mother that I'd find a home for you, and that promise is gonna be kept tonight. But your family. Yeah, this is our home. 
This is a junkyard. I am an old dog. I'm not going to be around for you a whole lot longer. On the farm, you'll have friends and real family. And one day, you'll have kittens of your own to care for. I can't offer you that here. Oh, but we love you, Rags. We're going to miss you. Yeah, we're going to miss you. I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. Now make your mother proud. Oh, aren't you the sweetest thing? <laughs> Betty, what was the name of that big, dumb dog we had? Uh, are you talking about Junior? Yeah, Junior. Whatever happened to him? Well, he died ten years ago, Robert. That's right. Isn't his bed still in the corner of the garage? Mm-hmm, right where you insisted on leaving it. Seems like a shame to let that bed collect dust. Maybe we could use another big dumb dog. Whoa, that's a lovely idea, Robert. Come here, boy. <laughs> ho, 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 whoa. When we get home, first thing I'm giving you is a bath. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Look at all those poor homeless animals! John, we have to do something. We can't possibly take care of all those animals, Liz. I'll take one! Vito, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? What's the whole town doing here? We all came to see the big tree! Hey! You want a job, a doggy? You come to Vito's Pizzeria with me, yeah? I put you to work guarding my pizzas from a certain cat that I know. <gasps> hey, I resemble that remark. All the pepperonis you can eat! What do you say, doggy? <laughs> hey, everyone! Take a pet home with you! Come on! We have a pet parade! <laughs> ho, 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 whoa! Garfield? Sometimes you amaze me. Oh, you are the spirit of Christmas. <laughs> Arlene, you know, the spirit of Christmas is hungry. The food's getting cold, everyone. Come on, let's eat. Now that's the cute as me. And this is a baby panda. Not as cute as me. Here we see a baby rhinoceros. Definitely not as cute as me. <laughs> I love watching nature films on TV. Remind me when you're leaving, Nermal. Oh, and feel free to use the word now in your answer. <laughs> a few more weeks. What? Oh, I can't take this anymore, Odie. Prolonged exposure to Nermal is hazardous to my health. Uh -huh. Oh, look, 27 baby penguins. None of them is cute as me. <laughs> and don't forget to join us tomorrow in the nationwide search for America's cutest cat. In every big city, contestants are already lining up for a chance to win this year's cutest cat trophy. Cutest cat trophy? Wow. <laughs> I haven't won a cutest cat trophy since... Tuesday. And the winning cat will also receive an all-expense-paid six-month vacation in Greenland! Greenland? Normal in Greenland? Far, far away in... How far, far away is Greenland? I don't know. Never mind. It's got to be far enough away. <laughs> six months without Normal. I have got to win that contest! Yes, you have got to win that contest. Well, what are you waiting for, Normal? Let's get you in here. 
Your flight's for Greenland leaving every hour. Okay, I'm all entered in the contest tomorrow and I'm gonna win. And do you know why, Garfield? Of course, because you're the cutest cat in the whole town. Soon to be the cutest cat in Greenland. I take my responsibility as judge seriously. I have a chance to set trends, to influence public taste. I want to redefine what cute is. Fashions change, styles change, cute must change. I am so bored with what passes for cute. Things like, hmm, <laughs> that. Huh? The opposite of that, that will be the new cute. The opposite of cute? How can I be the opposite of cute? Do you know what the opposite of cute is, Garfield? You. <laughs> Whoa. Let's face it, I'll never win this contest. Oh. I'll never win any contest. I might as well just stay home and watch TV all day at your house. No! You can't give up now, Nermal. Think of the glory. Think of the pride. Think of six months away in Greenland. But cute is all I got. How can I possibly become uncute? I can teach it to you before the competition tomorrow, but you've got to work hard. There's no time to waste. All right, let's start with manners, shall we? We have to get rid of them. Show me how you eat lasagna. No, 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 no. Too cute. First, you're going to have to do away with the silverware. <laughs> Watch and learn, Nermal. This is the uncute way to eat lasagna. Garfield, <laughs> careful. Some of that's actually getting in your mouth. Oh. That was a good one. Your turn, Nermal. Oh. You. Huh? Too neat. It needs something uncute, something disgusting, even. I know. Doggy tongue. Odie, front and center. Oh, stop! Odie, stop! Look, look, look. Stop! <laughs> Odie licking your face like that. Normal, you are so cute. Uh, this is going to take longer than I thought. <laughs> Normal, do you know how to play with one of these? <laughs> sure. I hope none of you are trying to eat while you watch this. <laughs> Meow. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And in that order, <gasps> let me show you what an uncute cat does with the ball. You use them to occupy small-minded dogs. Odie, huh? fetch. <laughs> That wasn't cute. <laughs> oh, Nermal and Odie, that's so cute. <laughs> Playing hide and seek in the trash cans like that. In fact, everything you do is so cute, Nermal. I'm doomed. Doomed to a life of eternal cuteness. I just can't not be cute. You can and you will. Your trip to Greenland and my peace and quiet depend on it. A little of this, some of this. Oh, and this is disgusting. Some of this. Now mix well. Garfield, what are you doing? I'm giving you an uncute makeover. Voila. What was all that for? This, Nermal, 
is the final threshold on your journey into the land of Uncute. Now you are ready. Uh, at least we're a little flowery deodorant. No. Oh, cute, cute. Very cute. Repulsively cute. I want to see that new kind of cute. The kind that defies convention. The kind that says, I am so cute, I am not afraid to be uncute. Huh? I don't get it either, but he's the judge. Show him what you got, Nermal. Hey. And keep your eyes on the prize. I'll keep mine on that plane ticket to Greenland. <laughs> Mmm, I smell buffet. It smells like 37 items including carved prime rib, medium rare, sweet potatoes, and chocolate raspberry souffle. <laughs> oh. Odie, you keep an eye on what's his name. I'm otherwise occupied. My stars and garters, is that really normal? What is that dire stench? Normal? You look like you just crawled out of a garbage blast! <laughs> Meow! Meow! That is just the kind of thing I wanted to see. A bold new look! A whole new kind of cute! Pussycat, pussycat, I think you just may be my pick. What do you say to that? <laughs> I love it! Delicious. Mm, superb. Mm, mm, mm. And I was wrong. There are 38 items, and the prime rib is medium well. Cat, give me that lemon meringue pie. Oh, I'm sorry. That was the chocolate cream pie. That was the lemon meringue pie. Get him! Stop that cat! Today, we mark a new era in cuteness. A new standard of thinking outside the cute box. <laughs> Imagine, I'm not only the cutest cat in the whole wide world, I'm also the uncutest. And so it is with great pride, and for a medium-sized fee, that I am proud to name the winner of the contest as... Stop with that cat! <laughs> 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 you! <laughs> you have destroyed all concepts of the old cuteness! <laughs> no! That's my crown! I'm uncute! I'm so uncute, I'm cute! Garfield, I was supposed to win! Look at me! Isn't it uncute to be a soul loser? Hey! You are an absolute mess! Hey, you don't look so good yourself, fella. Oh well, at least I'll have six months of no normal. Please fasten your seatbelts. We will be landing shortly in Greenland, where the current temperature is 50 degrees below zero. 50 degrees below zero? I don't even want my ice cream that cold. Let me alone. I just have to remember, 6,000 miles away from Nermal, six whole months of, of peace and quiet. Hello, Garfield. Nermal? <laughs> no, you're not Nermal. Who are you? I'm Thermal. I won the cutest cat competition in Canada. And I am Germal. I won the cutest cat competition in Mexico. And uh, I am Wilma. I won the cutest cat competition in Japan. You mean? Yes. We all want trips here to Greenland in our local cutest cat competitions. And we'll all keep you company here for the entire six months, eh? Caramba! He is not so very cute. Yes, how he won is incomprehensible.
Hello? No, I don't want to buy a 27-year membership in your gymnasium. Hello? No, this is not Feinblatt's Deli. Hello? No, I don't want a subscription to Pigeon Breeders Monthly. I already have one. I wouldn't go in there if I were you. Yes, I know I'm out of shape, and I still don't want to buy a 27-year membership in your gymnasium. John's trying to come up with an idea for a new comic book for Mr. Barker. Huh? The phone again! Oh, it's not going well. I don't care who you are or what you want. Whatever it is, I'm not going to buy it. Stop calling me, you idiot! Stop! <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Barker. <clears throat> I just called to see how that new idea is coming, Arbuckle. It's... it's... I'm sorry, Mr. Barker. The phone keeps interrupting me. I can't think. John can't think. There's late-breaking news. Oh, I understand. Why don't you do what I do, Arbuckle? Get away. Go where there's no phone. I'd love to, but, well, I can't afford a trip just now. Hey, I just acquired an old house up in the mountains. My business manager bought it cheap as an investment. I haven't been to see it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a phone. I can go up there and work and I won't be interrupted all the time? <laughs> Great! Make arrangements for Arbuckle to stay in that house I just bought. But isn't that house supposed to be haunted? This is great. I have to go pack. Oops. <laughs> Forgot to eat my pizza. Hey, you can forget to eat your pizza, but I won't forget to eat your pizza. Oh. The phone won't bother me. Nothing will bother me. And we won't leave until I get a terrific idea for a new comic book I can present to Mr. Barker. No. I'm not worried about running out of food. You know that catering truck that's always down the street at the construction site? Uh-huh. While John was packing, I added on a little. Well, take a look. Mr. Barker's secretary said the key was under the doormat. Hey, don't act so happy, Odie. I happen to know that this is... a haunted house. Just take a look at the title of this episode. Could I have a copy of the script we're doing now, please? The Garfield Show, episode 202, The Haunted House. <laughs> Come on, we better get inside and rest up. Looks like a big chase scene on page nine. Thanks. <laughs> This is great! There's no phone to ring and interrupt me. I can work without being disturbed. I don't have an idea yet, but once I get one, watch out! <laughs> oh, don't worry, Pop. Ghosts can't hurt you. They can only make you hurt yourself. <laughs> Field. Is that your stomach rumbling again? Oh, uh, uh, just in case, let's see what the internet has about ghosts. Like that. There's nothing there. You woke me up 
Just a second. I'm scolding the pooch here for waking me up when I was dreaming about Manicotti. As I was saying, you woke me up with North. That was. Oh, do you remember I said we had a big chase scene on page nine? Uh huh. This is page nine. <laughs> I still don't have a good idea for a new comic book. But at least the phone isn't ringing and there's nothing to disturb me. Ah! Except for my nutty cat and dog. Huh? What are you two doing? You two are acting like you saw a ghost. Huh? Huh? There's no such thing as ghosts. But he's right here. Open those overly large eyes of yours and take a look. He can't see me. I know there's no such thing as ghosts because I looked it up on the internet. And nothing you read on the internet is ever wrong. <gasps> now leave me alone so I can work. I still need an idea. Oh my. You saw the ghost. Uh-huh. I saw the ghost. Uh-huh. Why didn't he see the ghost? Because he couldn't. Human beings can't see ghost cats. We're only visible to other cats and pets of extremely low intelligence. I have to haunt this house for all eternity, or until I get a human to believe in those ghost cats. Well, isn't haunting a house a good job? No! It's boring. Especially when you go 50, 60 years with nobody inhabiting the house. I want to be with my friends, the other ghost cats. They've gone on to another, more interesting place. Huh? I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to scare that friend of yours until he believes in ghost cats. And I'll help you. Come on. Hmm. Maybe a superhero who throws coleslaw at people. No, it's been done. Okay, I've got an idea. Now here's what you do. You got some a dumb summer bottle. Yeah, that'll make him believe in ghost cats. <laughs> That's cute, Garfield. But it's not going to make me believe in ghosts. <laughs> That's not funny, Garfield. <laughs> 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 He's never gonna believe. We're not giving up. You need to be with your friends, and I need to be where there's Chinese food. <laughs> you can stop making those silly noises, Garfield. There are no ghosts. Uh -huh. uh... Please don't get my new shirt wrinkled, Garfield. And there are still no ghosts. <laughs> Very cute, Garfield. But there are still no ghosts. It says so on the internet, remember? It's no use. He'll never believe in ghost cats. Oh, yes, he will. I'm going to have a brilliant idea. You are? Yes. Let me just check the script and see what it's going to be. Uh, can I borrow a copy of the script for this episode again, please? Scene 19, scene 20. Hey, that's a good idea I'm gonna have. Follow me. Thanks. John's not gonna believe in ghost cats until he sees a ghost cat. But he cannot see me. No, but he'll see me. Oh, it's no use. I'll just have to tell Mr. Barker I don't have an idea for a new comic book.
A human being believes in ghost cats. I'm free! So I'm up here in the mountains getting a look at this house I bought. One of my cartoonists is staying here and I... No! Oh! Ah, Buckle, what's the meaning of... A ghost cat! A spooky, terrifying ghost cat going boo, boo, boo! Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Barker. And I haven't been able to come up with... Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. A ghost cat? That's a terrific idea for a new comic book. It is? Kids like ghosts, kids like cats. Ah, <laughs> Buckle, you're brilliant. So, according to the script, John sold his boss a new idea, and our friend the ghost cat is freed from haunting this place. Ah, <sighs> a happy ending. But not happy enough. Huh? Wide shot. Vito's pizza truck pulls up in front with loads of steaming hot pizzas for the clever cat. Hey, every script can use a few improvements here and there. Uh, keep scrubbing, Odie. happened one cold and rainy, stormy night. I know because I was there. Odie, no one cares if you were there. The point is that I was there. Okay, now where was I? Oh, right. The nightmare began with the arrival of some unannounced night visitor. Who could that be at this time of the night? It's Ivy! Are you gonna invite me in, Jonathan? Or am I expected to stand out here all night in the rain? I vote for all night out there in the rain. What a... delightful surprise, Aunt Ivy. Uh, please, come in. <laughs> um, uh, what brings you here? Suitcase. Not a good sign. The tree fell on the power line outside my house. They said it might take a week before power returns, so here I am. Huh? I see you still have those two mangy creatures. Full of germs, you know. Yes, yes, full of germs, very contagious, and sickening germs. Yeah. Well, at least it covers some of her face. with those cute fuzzy bunny slippers you bought me. <laughs> They're alive! <laughs> Ridiculous. No one with half a brain could actually wear such pathetic looking slippers. Uh, actually, I happen to own a pair just like them. You just made my point. That's yes, an Ivy one, John nothing. <laughs> bunny slippers. Bah, people should wear sensible slippers like mine. Slippers that look like giant carrots. And <laughs> 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 Ivy's right. This movie is silly. Let's call it a night. Hey, just when it was getting interesting. And Ivy, uh, why don't you take my bedroom? I was already planning on it. Mm. Just make sure those animals sleep outside. They're filthy and germ-ridden and... Ah! <laughs> Odie! You fetched my bunny slippers. Uh, hey, Aunt Ivy, don't they look just like the ones from the movie? Ah! I am not going to bed until you get rid of those abominable things. <laughs> Relax, Aunt Ivy, it was just a movie. Get rid of them! <sighs> All right, but bunny slippers can't hurt you. No. But having a fat lady fall on you can. 
<laughs> Set one paw in my room, and you'll be sorry you ever met me. Huh? It's a little late for that. <laughs> Night, guys. Bodie, fetch. <laughs> Is everything all right? Oh, the bunny slippers are after me! <laughs> They're not there anymore. There's nothing out there, Aunt Ivy. I know what I saw. It must be your two mangy pets playing tricks on me. Garfield and Odie? Do you really think they do something rotten to you? <laughs> I must have been dreaming. I thought I saw. <sighs> Night, Aunt Ivy. Good night, guys. I need to get some sleep. Maybe these earplugs will make that possible. What? Have to leave so soon? We'll hurry back. Like around the turn of the century. Hey, you guys deserve an Oscar for the best special effect. We had a deal. Oh, sorry. Huh? Here you go, Squeak. This was a good deal. You got anyone else you want scared <laughs> out of here? <laughs> wow. You guys are getting really good at this. Coffee? We're not doing anything. <gasps> the bunny slippers. And Ivy! Garfield! Odie! <laughs> Are you guys trying to tell me something? Behind you! Yeah, right. Like they're gonna believe a guy who calls up and says, I want to report a pair of evil bunny slippers. What? Give me the address. We'll be right over. Jacobs, we have a 743 on our hands. Oh no. Evil bunny slippers. Let's roll. Be careful, man. Remember how you've been trained for just this situation? Area is secure. Roger. Your tax dollars at work. Hey, I know you. You're that mad scientist who once sucked my cat into the TV set. Huh? The animators are reusing another character design from last season. Do you know anything about these sinister bunny slippers? Of course! I'm a mad scientist! We know everything! But we kept it secret so as to not cause any discomfort to the population. How very thoughtful of you. The bunny slippers only come alive on the blue moon nights, which happen once every 2.55546 years. So bunny slippers come alive on blue moons? Not only that, 
They also tend to... <laughs> ...tend to grow at an alarmingly exponential rate. Not to worry. Daylight will return them to their harmless original selves. And according to my calculation, the sun will rise in exactly five hours. <gasps> five hours? <laughs> The entire town will be destroyed in five hours. We've got to do something! Goodness gracious! This could indeed do the trick! The all-night tanning salon? That's on the other side of town! We need some kind of bait! And there's the perfect bait standing right in front of you. Huh? Why are you all staring at my beloved carrot slippers? <laughs> Get me down. Let me loose. Or I'll have you arrested. Tanning salon. For my vacation, I'd like to go somewhere that's as cute as I am. But there isn't any place that cute. Our field. What are you doing here? Normal. You know how I'm always telling you to leave. Well, this time it's for your own good. But I haven't finished my tropical style fur tan. Whoa. Please, I'm just a cute, innocent. Listen. Meow. 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 Where did you find it? I think it's time for a little summer glow. And from their throats came this howl, a wailing shriek, half of horror and half of fear, utterly inhuman and. Garfield, you are totally making this up. Absolutely not. That's normal. All true. Every word of it. The following day, the police went door to door and collected every pair of bunny slippers in the neighborhood, just to be on the safe side. But of course, the best part was... After what you and that cat of yours did to me, I'm never coming back. Not in a million years. That means like about eight weeks. Hey, but I'll take what I can get. So until then, we live happily ever after. Uh, great, Garfield, but isn't that another blue moon like in your story? Who cares? The bunny slippers are all gone, right, Odie? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm taking a nap. I deserve it. After all, I just saved the entire planet. That's right. The whole planet and everyone on it, you included. You see, it all started far out in space. I mean, far out. They have this popular chain of fast food restaurants. They're all over the galaxy. You'll find one on practically every asteroid. Welcome to Neptunian Nuclear Chicken. May I take your order, please? I will have the Jupiter-sized module of chicken wings. Extra crunchy. Jupiter space back, extra crunchy. Oh, and a side of coleslaw. One side of coleslaw. Thank you. Now you might be wondering how I know about this, right? Well, I've seen this cartoon before. So anyway, this chain of restaurants is owned by this not very nice guy. What do you mean? I can't open another bajillion restaurant. No one tells me what I can't do. But Commander Harlan, we have not enough chickens. Maybe not, but we will. Come with me. Where are we going? Anticipating this need, I set up a secret research outpost on 
Earth. In no time at all, they were streaking towards Earth, where certain individuals you may recognize were stopping for chow. We're just going in for a small snack. Do you know what a small snack is, Garfield? Do you know what a foolish question is, John? Even if you took every chicken on this planet, it would not be enough for your needs, Commander. That is why we've developed a ray that will turn every man, woman, and animal on this planet into <laughs> a chicken. Bring in the test subject and we'll see how it works. Pepperoni and a mushroom. Uh. A sausage and a black olives. <laughs> the meat lover is a special. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Leave some room, Garfield. I'm making a lasagna. I don't see your delivery boy working today, Vito. Oh, I just sent him to make a delivery across the street. He'll be right back. No, he wouldn't be, because the delivery boy was about to become the delivery chicken. But I just came to deliver a pizza. Just stand there for one more moment. <laughs> this ray, this will really transform him into, yes, <laughs> a chicken. <laughs> you owe me Get back to Vito's $12 for the pizza plus. It worked! Can we fry him now? Not yet. First, I have to bombard the entire city. Everyone is getting zapped by the rays. It will work faster on some than others, but soon they will all be chickens. <laughs> Everyone? Every Earth creature except anyone who is at this moment ingesting an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato paste, and pasta. <laughs> Who would imagine that an inhuman quantity of ricotta cheese, tomato sauce, and pasta could taste so good? Mmm, <laughs> that was great. Peyote, something wrong? Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, oh, that's the worst chicken imitation I've ever seen. <laughs> And that was the best one. What do I do? What do I do? I know. I'll ask John. We should be going, Garfield. We have to stop on the way home and. Tell me it's not so. Tell me John and Odie haven't been turned into chicken. <laughs> Italian chicken, chicken parmesan. I have to get out of this coop, a uh, restaurant. <laughs> help, I need help, lots of help. A policeman, he help. Officer, officer, I would like to report two people and a dog being mysteriously transformed into chickens. Buck, 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 buck. Crazy things are happening. As the chickening of the population spread across the state, the governor called a hurried press conference. <laughs> this is awful. This is a disaster. Things could not be worse. Let 
this be a lesson to you? Never say things could not get worse. Things will always find a way of getting worse. It landed in the park. It was met by the rotten commander Harlan. It will take many trips, but we'll transport all the chickens back home. <laughs> I can hardly wait to start frying them all up. Frying them all up? How are you going to get them all into our spacecraft? Simple. Chickens love corn. <laughs> I need to find some way to get inside. Uh, and then he... <clears throat> I joined the procession of poultry. And I would have made it too, except I suddenly remembered something awful. <laughs> I'm allergic to chicken feathers! <laughs> Aren't you even going to say Gazunte? Stop that, cat! He should have been turned into a chicken by now! Turn me into a chicken. Turn everyone into a chicken. You notice this guy only has one idea? But I'm going. I need. I need. Huh? <laughs> See the two with the real dumb expressions? I think those are John and Odie. You might as well give up. <laughs> I'm trapped. Farewell, Cathood. I hope I'm this good looking when I'm a chicken. I don't know how you escape my transformation ray, cat. Do you by any chance eat huge quantities of lasagna? Mm -hmm. Well, that explains it. But you'll never eat it again, you hear me? From now on until you're served in a bucket. It's chicken feed for you. <laughs> no, no! Not me! I'm not! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, all out of chicken. Oh, but wait, now's my chance to try out these earth chickens. So now the question is, how do I change everyone in town back into everyone in town? Oh, you look positively scrumptious. Uh, <laughs> hey, this might work out. Don't worry, you're going to be delicious. Now, where's that spatula? <laughs> so, how would you like someone to prevent you from winding up next to a little cup of cold slaw? Uh, murder, please! Well, I think we can make a deal. And a deal we made. And I'll say this for the guy. He was a chicken of his word. He told me how to change him back, and then he changed everyone else back, including you. Even blanked out all your memories so you have no idea that you were ever a chicken. Then, as he agreed, he and his aide left the earth after promising never to return for takeout. And that's how I saved the entire planet. And now everything is back to normal. I'm going to go start making dinner, Garfield. We're having, uh... Um... Nut fried chicken. Lasagna. Fine. Like I said, everything is back to normal. Except, of course, John does lay an egg once in a while, which I don't understand at all because boy chickens don't lay eggs.
Welcome to those of you in sorry need of education. Today we will explore the history, the legend, of the most superior animal on the entire planet. <laughs> Not even close. Of the one million species that inhabit this planet, none elicit or deserve more respect and admiration than the cat. Sore loser. Clearly the cat, known scientifically as Felice Catus, is the most regal animal on the earth. We can trace the history of the cat back to prehistoric times, a time when saber-toothed cats roamed the land. The mighty saber-tooth was master of the land, a great hunter, graced with keen senses of sight, hearing, and smell. When he spotted a delicious-looking prehistoric mouse, his feline instinct sprang into action. As his primitive cat cravings took over, he became a crazed beast and nothing could stop him. Sadly, the saber tooth was wiped out 13,000 years ago. Here's our next lesson. In ancient Egypt, cats were worshipped as gods and goddesses, as well they should be then and now. <sighs> we worship you. We adore you. We love your act. You rock. Thank you, thank you. Really, you shouldn't. But what am I saying? Yes, you should. And now we dance. <laughs> ah, those were the good old days. Back when they knew how to treat a cat right. Hey, check this out. Back in the Middle Ages, the King of Wales proclaimed that cats were not only cute and clever, but also valuable. From this day forward, I decree that all cats are to be honored and protected. They are cute, clever, and most important, they are excellent at catching mice. Oh, hey, huh? get him off! Notice how cats love to eat mice. <laughs> Relax. I'm not going to eat you. Thou shalt not? No, just playeth along. There's not good. <laughs> so began the myth that cats eat mice. Huh? Of course not. Use what little common sense you have, pooch. Hey. Here's a mouse. Here's a pizza. Which one would you rather eat? It would be wrong, very wrong, to think the only value of a cat is to rid the world of mice. In fact, cats have been behind, if not directly responsible for, some of the greatest moments in history. For instance, back in the Arabian Desert a long time ago, here, my cat. I have packed your food in these handy bags made from the lining of a sheep's stomach. In here are some mice. Oh, yummy. Mice for me to eat. And this one is some goat's milk. Whew, that's a little better, but not much. Couldn't we stop off for Chinese food? The nearest place is only 3,000 miles away. Huh? Enough nomading for one day. We stop here. Boy, was it a hot one today. Since I'm not about to eat mice, I guess I'm stuck with this goat's milk. <laughs> hey, something's wrong with this stuff. Hey. It's solidified into ripened curds of soured milk. Does anyone have a cracker? Yes. <sighs> oh, no. oh, triple yum. I believe I've just invented a new food. Hey, give me some of that. This is a great invention. I shall call it cheese. Now he's giving cats credit for inventing cheese. That's ridiculous. Everyone knows cheese was invented by a mouse. But aside from inventing cheese, cats have made other great contributions to the world. For instance, Florence, Italy, 1503. The guy at the easel is Leonardo da Vinci. 
Yes, yes. I can see it coming together and now. Not what you'd call a masterpiece. <laughs> Stop! Gato! Stop, little Topo! You will ruin the great painting I am doing, which is destined to hang forever in the galleries of the world! <laughs> Beautiful painting. Hey, calm down, Lenny. <laughs> it's not of that wonderful. I could paint a better painting with my tail. Now, what the shall I paint? I know, your sister a Shirley. Terrible. But the people who buy art have so little a taste. Good God, though, good. What can I give you as a reward? Well, hundreds of years ago, my ancestors in a vintage cheese. I was wondering if you, being Italian, of course, could combine it with tomato sauce and layers of flat pasta noodles and then bake for, say, one hour in a 350-degree oven? Ah! Now a cat created lasagna! Oh, no, and painted the Mona Lisa! 1804. The study of the great composer Ludwig van no, no, Beethoven. No, 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 no. Nine, nine, nine. It's all wrong. Ah, hello, Amadeus. Have you caught any mice today? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. Hmm. Ba 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 bum. Ba 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 bum. Ba 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 Thank you, Amadeus. You deserve a tasty reward. <laughs> and that's the truth. A cat was responsible for Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Brilliant. He's taking oh, credit for everything. What a symphony! Oh, Come on, guys. Please don't oh, 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 It's me. What's all this talk about cats doing this Ooh. and cats doing that? You make it sound like cats have done everything good. Hey, I can't rewrite history, can I? That's all you've been doing here. <laughs> Tell him the truth, Garfield. Well, it's mostly happened like... The truth, or we'll let John know how many pizzas you put on his credit card last month. All right, all right. <sighs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, there were a few details I left out of the stories I just told you. Hey, something's wrong with this stuff. It's solidified into ripened curds of sour milk. Stuff is tasty! I think I died and gone to heaven. Tasty! I think we should call this stuff cheese! <laughs> cheese? Why? Because uh, it looks more like cheese than anything else I can think of. Okay, everyone, let's record this moment in history. Everyone look at me and say, cheese! And that story about Leonardo da Vinci? Well, it was true what I said. Sort of. She's a ruined! <laughs> yeah, sure looks of that away. Maybe you should try painting clowns or Elvis on black velvet. Hey, I know how to fix that. Actually, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Hello. Yeah, he's here. It's for you, the Louvre in Paris. They heard about your new painting. News travels fast in the world of art. The Louvre? The Louvre? Why, that is the greatest art museum in the world. Little Topo, I want to reward you. I want to cook something wonderful for you. Well, I had this idea for something called lasagna. Lasagna? No. No one will ever want to eat a something called uh, lasagna. Who knew? And then that story about Beethoven and his fifth symphony? Amadeus, there is a mouse in here. Boy, for a guy who doesn't hear so good, he's good at hearing mice. <laughs> hey. Take it outside, fella. Ah! <sighs> now I have to chase him, I guess. Oh, it's 
it's no use. I do not even know how to start my fifth symphony. Maybe I should skip it and move on to my sixth. Right. That is it. Da, 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 da. Genius. Thank you, little mouse. Thank you. So you see, though cats have made their contribution to history, so have mice. Garfield, that was terrific. We misjudged you. You're a pretty honest cat. Yeah, it takes a big cat to do something like that. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks for you. so long. <laughs> No, of course we're not going to put that stuff about mice on the air. We'll edit it out and just show the part about how great cats are. Oh. This DVD is the show we just did. I'm supposed to send it to the network so they can broadcast it to the whole country. But I won't. That one goes in the trash. Instead, I'm sending them this one, in which I edited out all the mice stuff and just left in the part about how great cats are. No, it's not unfair. It's just sneaky. Besides, name me one smart thing mice have ever done. Well, for one thing, we're really good at switching videos. <laughs> Now, Garfield, I know you're not going to like this, but Liz insists you have to lose 10 pounds. So we're putting you on a diet of carrot sticks and lettuce. <clears throat> now, before you say anything or throw a fit because it isn't pasta, please understand, we're doing this for your own good. <laughs> you understand? You're not going to put up a fight or steal the refrigerator or anything? Oh. <laughs> this is great! Let me get you some low-calorie salad dressing. Perfect. He'll be here in nine seconds. <laughs> Garfield, I'm so impressed with how well you're taking this. I guess I owe you an apology. Keep eating like that, Garfield, and you'll lose that ten pounds in no time. Uh, you need a napkin? I'll go get one. Just in time. The Chinese restaurant will be delivering in 11 seconds. <laughs> no, he hasn't lost any weight since his last visit. In fact, he's gained three more pounds. Uh, that's not possible. I've had him on a strict diet. <laughs> John, for his own good, you have to stop him from eating so much. I can't watch him every minute. I have work to do. <laughs> well, I may have just the solution. <laughs> an inventor with an overweight pussycat invented this. He calls it the motorized meow monitor. Motorized meow monitor? Uh, how does it work? I'll show you. This collar locks on. I'll give you a key so you can remove it after Garfield has lost 10 pounds. It contains a tracking device. Wherever Garfield goes, the robot will follow, train its camera on him, and send a signal back to you. Ah! Oh, this is amazing, Liz. I can sit at my own computer at home and keep an eye on Garfield, no matter where he goes and what he eats. You can borrow it, and I'll give you an extra collar just in case. This is not fair. It's an invasion of privacy. It's, it's spying. Get me an attorney. Get me an attorney named Murray. You have no right to... Huh? What's that you have in your hand there, Garfield? What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, want to lick? Oh. Going out, Garfield? Well, remember, you're still on that diet. You're not to eat anything. Not a crumb will cross these lips. Okay, so I'm lying. 
It's okay to lie if it's an emergency. And me not being able to eat between meals, if that's not an emergency, I don't know what is. <gasps> Vito Savory Pizza. I haven't tasted it for, oh, it must be a good six hours. But I will need a disguise. <laughs> I'll have the outfit back in five minutes or ten slices, whichever occurs first. Mamma mia! It is the Garfield Orange Alert! Everyone, go take the pizzas! <laughs> Garfield? Where is that handsome cat? Oh, where? <laughs> Oh, there he is. Garfield, if you don't want I should call John, you're gonna promise me that you won't swipe any pizzas. On my honor as the star of a popular cartoon show, I promise. Excellent. You passed the pirate and pussycat. You I didn't say anything about the lasagna. You mozzarella mooching manis. He only got eight of them. Oh, uh, only eight? That's not so bad. Last week, he got 17 and... A gallon of spumoni. Ah, the perfect place to dine on nature's most perfect food. Ah. Garfield, I'm disappointed. So am I. I could only get eight. You're supposed to stay on your diet if you eat those lasagnas. All right, all right. I don't need to hear the cheap threat. I know it'll be cheap, and I know it's a threat. What are you doing? <laughs> My lasagna! Hey, what is wrong with it? Suddenly Vito's lasagna, it is not good enough for you. <gasps> what are you doing? <gasps> I am in such trouble. Hey, it's just one cat who won't eat it. But that cat, he's eating everything. If he won't eat it, nobody will eat it. I have to change the recipe. There are donuts in the world, and pulled pork sandwiches, and fried shrimp the size of whales. But if John sees me eating any of it, ah, I just have to make sure he doesn't see me eating. <laughs> That's my exercise for the year, and maybe next year, too. But it worked. I don't see that motorized meow monitor anywhere. Huh? One of everything. No, uh, make it two. Imagine John thinking a bucket of bolts could... <gasps> what? Uh, keep those on ice for me. Garfield! I'll eat this in here where he can't see me. Phew! Even if that robot followed me in here, he couldn't shoot video to send back to John. It's too dark. <laughs> it's no use. I'll never escape that robot. Huh? Well, at least this came off. Without it on, the motorized meow monitor won't be able to track me. Hmm. Wait a minute. John got an extra one. If I throw this one away, he'll just put the other one on me. There's got to be a way to get him to give this machine up. And I think I know what it is. It's working out great, Liz. I can sit here at home, keep an eye on Garfield, and make sure he doesn't eat between meals. It's for his own good, but I'll bet he's not a happy cat. Not happy at all. It looks like he's wandered down to the waterfront. Oh, agony. Oh, despair. Oh, despair and agony. Oh, did I mention woe? Oh, despair, agony, and woe. Hours without lasagna. Days without pork chow mein and crispy noodles. How could John do this to me? <laughs> no. <laughs> he looks pretty upset that I'm denying him his favorite foods. You know, Garfield, that's just an act to get your sympathy. This doesn't look like an act. What's he doing now? 
He's... he's heading out onto the pier. There's an ocean liner there. A big one. Liz, it looks like he's taking a last look around. Like he's leaving. Don't fall for it, John. Liz, he's getting on the boat. Liz, he's on the ship. Garfield is leaving. He's going to some other country. I've got to stop him. John? John! Ooh, I better get off before she sails. <laughs> John should be here in about 15 minutes. Ten, if he makes all the lights. <laughs> Gotta be in time. I've just gotta be. What do you mean it's already sailed? My cat's on board. Get it back. Sorry, that ship's on its way to Tokyo. T -t 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 Tokyo? Well, he always did like salmon teriyaki. <sighs> oh, he really did it, Liz. Garfield's gone to Tokyo. I'll probably never see him again. I can't tell you how much I'm going to miss him. Sure you can. Just try. John, I'm really sorry how all this worked out. If you'd like to cancel our dinner tonight. No, no, I need to get my mind off my little fat furry friend. You know, I'd give anything to see him again. I wouldn't make him diet. I'd get him whatever he wanted. How about donuts from Dave's drive through Donut Diner? You want donuts, Garfield? Sure. You know, Liz, if he'd just come back from Tokyo, I'd... <laughs> Garfield! You didn't go to Tokyo, scaring me like that. You know what I ought to do? I ought to... <sighs> get you those donuts. <laughs> and on the way home, we could stop at Vito's for pizza. And at Irv's Taco Emporium. Oh. You seem to have enough food to tide you over while I take Liz to dinner. I'll be back around 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you later. Uh... Hello, pup. Hey, come on. We're gonna watch my favorite new show. I tried to get him to lose weight, Liz. Honest, I did. It's just that he's Garfield. I know. Could I have some more water, John? Sure. Let me pour it for you. I. Oops. Let me mop that up. <laughs> oh. No. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, sorry again. Did you see where my pork chop went? <laughs> <laughs> oh, John, you got ketchup all over me. <laughs> oh, well, that's better than last time when I spilled the mustard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love watching John on a date. Where else are you going to find comedy like that? <sighs> hey, you hungry, Odie? Mm-hmm. Well then, you better go get some food. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Quadrant 9, Murray. <laughs> My generator bank is low. I need to find a place I can stop off for a day or two and recharge. <laughs> Earth? <laughs> What's to do on Earth? Most boring planet in the galaxy. Makes Trisector Blue seem like a bleen festival, if you know what I mean. <laughs> well, I guess it'll do. I mean, it's on the way. <sighs> John will be home any minute now and he'll make dinner. I wish he'd hurry. I haven't eaten in <gasps> two hours, 15 minutes, and three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Here's John. He went to apply for cartooning work. You'll be able to tell by the look on his face if he got hired or not. Oh. 
Ooh, that looks like a knot to me. I'll have dinner on the table soon, guys. Oh, soon is not soon enough. Can you make soon sooner? I don't know why we're rushing him. Have you noticed how bad John's cooking has been lately? Especially when he's out of work and dejected. Sometimes it's hard to tell what it is he's serving. What do you think it is, boy? Meat, fish, or pasta? Hmm. I'm thinking chicken chow mein or maybe chocolate pudding. Or both mixed together. I think I need an emergency banana. There must be somebody out there who wants to hire a cartoonist. John Arbuckle. Arbuckle, Eddie Gourmand here. You know me. <laughs> the world's greatest food critic and all around cool person. Now listen, I was told you are a cartoonist. Y yes, I was. I, I mean, I am. Well, I need one I can pay a fabulous salary to to do drawings in my cookbook. Fabulous salary? But I have to ask you, Arbuckle, are you a good cook? You want to know if I'm a good cook? <laughs> I have some thoughts on the matter. Well, yes, I'm an excellent cook. Those are not my thoughts. Tell you what, I'll come to dinner tonight at your house. If I like what you serve, the job and the fabulous salary are yours. You have my address? Mm-hmm. Good. See you tonight at 8. Garfield, I'm going to get a job with a fabulous salary. I knew you could do it. All I have to do is cook a great dinner. I knew you couldn't do it. Now, what do I need? Oh, ingredients! I have to go to the market and buy ingredients! Uh, see you soon! <laughs> Even his bananas aren't that good. <laughs> I forgot. They have gravity on this planet. Let's see what's around here. House! Trees? I better hide my spacecraft. You know how bad this is? Even I won't eat it. You're darn right that's pretty bad. That smell. That smells just like the corrugated uranium my mother used to make. Mm. Oh, delicious. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. You like that, fella? Highly obese cat. Best food I've had in the galaxy. Well, if you want more, the dog's not going to eat his either. <laughs> <laughs> Let me at it. You know, Odie, I've been hungry, but I don't think I've ever been that hungry. Let's see if John left any more of that stuff on the stove. The more of it our friend here eats, the less we'll have to finish. Mm, mm. Murray, I could get to like this Earth place if only it didn't have all this gravity. Yeah, gravity. Earth is lousy with it. We interrupt this Garfield cartoon to bring you this educational moment. Tell them not to worry, it'll be quick. Don't worry, it'll be quick. Thank you. This is for those of you who don't know what gravity is. Gravity is a natural phenomenon by which objects with mass attract one another. I'll repeat that because I don't understand it either. It has something to do with how big objects attract littler objects. The Earth is a big object, so smaller objects are attracted to it. History says that gravity was first figured out by a man named Isaac Newton back in the 17th century. They say it happened when an apple fell on his head. Well, that's not exactly how it happened. I say, old chap, how about a spot of dinner for your pussycat? Hmm, it would seem I have to take matters into my own paws. Apples. Well, they're not exactly lasagna, but they'll do. <sighs> ah, there we go. Stop. Stop. What happened? I was asleep and you fell down, my fine pussycat. <laughs> hmm. I wonder why you did not fall up. Could it be the force of gravity? And so, in conclusion, gravity is why things fall down and go boom. 
And so Isaac Newton formulated his theory of how gravity works. And why we do not all float away from this planet. He became world famous, and of course his cat didn't get a bit of credit. So that's what gravity is, and why it's a good thing to have. This concludes the educational portion of our program. Don't worry, we won't have another one until next season or maybe the one after that. Our story resumes. I like all this gravity. All this walking on the floor. Without gravity, we feel so free. Time to use the old portable gravity elimination device. <laughs> Oh, great! This is just like home. John had a cake in the oven? His last one was like lead. I hope this one is light. Hey, not bad. Huh? Oh. Whoa. Odie, stop kidding around. You're a dog, Odie. Dogs can't fly. No, you can't. Any more than cats can fly. Which we can't do either, so stop floating around like that. Odie, is this one of those hokey dream sequences where we do on the show every once in a while? I don't either. Whoa. Hey, Odie, look. I'm not falling. Give it a try. Oh, I lost track of the time and spent too long at the market. I won't get home in time to cook Mr. Gorman the great meal that will give me that fabulous salary. Maybe Garfield and Odie will entertain him until I get there. Would you float over there and see who that is? Open up, Arbuckle, it's me! It's eight and I don't like being kept waiting at mealtime. <gasps> oh no, Mr. Gromand is here already. I'll run around and go in the back door. <laughs> Huh? Garfield! Hey, John. I found something that's almost as much fun as sleeping or eating. My tomatoes! My carrots! My rutabagas! I think John's too heavy to float like this. Uh, I wonder if my generator bank is recharged yet. Arbuckle, what is going on? Arbuckle, is my dinner ready? This place is getting crowded. This might be a good time to go check. Better turn off the old gravity eliminator. Uh -oh. oh, what a beautiful job of setting the table. Huh? Huh? What a fine way of tossing a salad. What a bad way of landing on your head. Oh, Ooh. and look oh. at this stir fry. I can already see how perfectly yummy it will be after you heat it up. Heat it up? Oh, yes, heat it up. <laughs> I'm about to heat it up, Mr. Gorman. Good. And I'll start on your splendid salad while you do. All charged up and ready to go. I keep telling you, Odie, I have no idea what happened. But I think I know who does. Hey, you! Yoo-hoo! I thought it might be you. What happened in the house? That was your doing. Guilty. Hope you enjoyed it. Hey, the food was great. If I come back someday, can I have that again? Can you make us float again? It's a deal. Bye! Bye! Whoa, that was amazing. I never would have believed it. No, not floating. Somebody liking John's cooking. Our buckle, oh. this is delicious! The stir fry is ready, Mr. Gourmand. Oh, and it smells divine. You are so hired. I won't just pay you a fabulous salary, <laughs> I'll pay you a super fabulous salary. 
Yeah, two somebody's like John's cooking. Well, it just goes to show, Odie. Sometimes it all works out. Hurry back, my friend. dinner on the table. I'll be right in with the lasagna, guys. Be careful, it's very hot. I don't care if it's hot, just as long as it's here. Yuck is putting it mildly. <clears throat> Instead of this, could we, like, uh, have some food, please? I'm sorry you don't like it. It's Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. I didn't have time to make fresh. Can you live with it? <laughs> all right, all right. Get in the car. We'll go to Vito's. Mm. Vito, you're the master. And I tell you, this is a lot better than Joe's frozen microwave lasagna. So is appendicitis. Oh, thank you. But the true master was a man who taught me how to cook, the great Giuseppe Squisito. He made the best lasagna in the world. He was your teacher? He was my teacher, my mentor, my hero. The greatest Italian chef who ever molded a meatball. We were so fortunate, those of us who got to train under him. You call yourself a chef. I should make you all and turn in your soil to aprons. Tell me, what are the two most important ingredients in anything you cook? Your heart and your soul. I can hear you. Your heart and your soul. Until you learn that, you will never be worthy of the honor of being called a chef. If only I could hear him call me that. Well, invite him. I'm sure he... Oh, no, 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 no. He retired. Uh, disappeared long before I opened the Vitos here. No one knows where he is, or even if he is still among us. Hmm. Quiet, Ori. Many a night, I dream of him seeing it, tasting my marinara and saying, Vito, you are a chef. Ah, but it will never happen. Hey, let me get you some of Vito's world-famous thick crust pizza, eh? <laughs> Vito's a good guy. I hope someday he sees that chef Squisito again. <laughs> Best lasagna in the world. The 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 best lasagna in the world. In the world. I've got to have it. I've got to have it. I've got to have the best lasagna in the world. Squeak. Wake up! Wake up, Squeak! Ow! <laughs> Garfield, you woke me up, right? In the middle of a cheese dream. Squeak, I need your help. Oh, it was about cheddar. That's my favorite. Squeak, I need you to alert the mouse network. I have to find a chef named Giuseppe Squisito. Uh, can't it wait till morning? Sure. <laughs> All right, it's morning. Find him. He's the man who makes the best lasagna in the world. Garfield, lunch is on the table. How do you expect me to eat this when the best lasagna in the world is out there, just somewhere waiting to be eaten? 
Hey, I have to keep my strength up. Garfield, Garfield! My friend Irv here found him. Tell him, Irv. You're uh, looking for Chef Giuseppe Squazito? Desperately. Well, I moved. I now live in a cheese factory. Lucky guy. And Chef Squazito, he comes in all the time to buy mozzarella, ricotta, and parmesan. <gasps> The three basic ingredients in the best lasagna in the world. Take me to him. Take me to him right now. Can we walk faster? He lives in a shack out this way. Why are we going all the way out here, Garfield? Because I must have the best lasagna in the world. That's it. He lives there. Thanks. OK, you guys can go home. I'm gonna go eat the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Kitty cat, what do you want? Ah, 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 ah. You want the lasagna? Meow. The best lasagna in the world? <laughs> no. So you think Garfield will get lasagna? Garfield always gets lasagna. Ugh. Yeah, I know I look stupid, but there's nothing I won't do for the best lasagna in the world. <laughs> Down here, Tiny. <laughs> A little bambino left on my doorstep. Are you hungry, a little baby? Yeah, <laughs> hungry. Then I get you the most delicious food any baby would want to eat. <laughs> Here we come. The best. <laughs> Baby food made out of turnips and oatmeal. <laughs> Do not cry, little bambino. Squisito will find you something you will like. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't laugh. You used to sound just like this. <laughs> Here, a little one. You will like this. Hmm, this is not working out. I need to find some paper. What am I going to do? I cannot keep a baby around here, even a homely, fuzzy one. How can I find it's a mother? <laughs> a note? I did not notice a note there before. If you find this baby, please feed it the best lasagna in the world, his mother. No, I do not think a lasagna is a healthy food for little babies. Then return him to 150 West Central Avenue. Come, my little bambino. I take you back to your mother. Are you sure you don't want to grab a quick bite before we do this? This is 150 West Central Avenue. Vito's Pizzeria? You live here, a little baby? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Chef Esquisito! Oh, Chef Esquisito, it is you! Do you not remember me? Vito Capelletti, I was one of your students. Vito Capelletti, one of my worst students. You were the one who tried putting spaghetti on a barbecue. <sighs> Yes, but uh, I learned. I learned from you. And, and now I have my own restaurant. Uh, please, uh, taste my tagliatelle. Uh, sample my spumoni. I would not soil my taste buds with your cooking. <sighs> but I am a good cook now. For you could not possibly be a... Hey, that's not a bad meatball. You... 
You like it? In fact, it is a very good meatball. Tell me, how is your cannelloni? My cannelloni? It is, uh, it's, uh... It is, uh, under the way. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I have here a nice cannelloni for you. Ah, I want you to try my fettuccine Alfredo. Oh, and you must try my chicken marsala and my garlic bread. <laughs> Vito, you truly are a chef. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, grazie, maestro. Uh, thank you. And you, pussy gato. I am in your debt for making this happen. How can I show my appreciation? <gasps> Garfield, I don't know how you did it. You actually got Chef Squizito to come here and uh -huh. prepare his world-famous lasagna for us. I have not cooked in many years, not since I retired. I sold my recipe to a company that markets it as... Ah, it is already. Woohoo! Ah. Wow. Here you are. Joe's a frozen a microwave uh, lasagna. Uh, Chef Squizito, I don't know how to tell you this, but we tried Joe's frozen microwave lasagna and it was terrible. <clears throat> terrible? But it is so tasty and so easy to make. You just peel off the plastic film and microwave it. Plastic film? Uh, hey, if you take the plastic film off before you cook it, mm, this is the best lasagna in the world. Uh, mm, mm, um. <laughs> for ice cream. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> Don't waste your time, Garf. Squeak, how'd you know I was up here? I know all, I see all, and I see that the ice cream truck will hit a pothole in the street, and a case of chocolate num-num bars with almonds will pop out. Chocolate num num bars with almonds. Told you, I have developed the power to see into the future. <laughs> by the way, the garbage truck is about to come by, and when it hits the same pothole, you'll be covered with 30 pounds of rotten mackerel. You know, I always like a little smelly fish with my chocolate num num bars. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now that I'm defished, I need to find out how Squeak did that. <sighs> you want to know how I know what's going to happen before it happens. John's doing chores, he's about to hit his thumb with a hammer. How could you possibly know? Oh, 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 oh that hurts! Oh. I'll hide. He's gonna come in and say, oh, I smashed my poor little thumb with that big hammer. <laughs> oh, I smashed my poor little thumb with that big hammer! Oh. Now he's gonna trip over Odie. Odie, oh. look out! <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna wander off wondering how I do this. <laughs> Whew. Right again. You're wondering, too. Well, I'll let you in on the secret. I've been doing something you've been doing. That's right. In fact, you're doing it right this second. Come on. 
I've been watching the Garfield Show. John got this new satellite dish with all these new channels. And on one of them, guess what I found? Here it comes. Boy, what I won't do for ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Here it goes. So you see, the reason I know what's going to happen before it happens is that I've seen this cartoon already. Yeah, really. John and Garfield, they don't know about this terrific channel. And they don't know I've been recording episodes and storing them on the video recorder here. The episode you're watching, it's a rerun. And I recorded it three weeks ago. Here, I'll jump ahead. I'll jump ahead. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Let's see what happens in the next scene. Squeak, I don't know how you predict the future, but... I know, I know. You want me to feed you my predictions and you'll become famous as the cat who can predict the future, future, future. Deal. <laughs> That's coming up. I better get in there so I can be in that scene. Huh? Okay, here's my idea, Odie. I'll give out Squeak's predictions and I'll become famous as the cat who can predict the future, future. Oh. <laughs> Squeak, I don't know how you predict the future, but... I know, I know. You want me to feed you my predictions and you'll become famous as the cat who can predict the future, future, future. Deal. <laughs> Come on, Odie. Let's get to work. Uh -huh. Now comes the part where I give Garfield predictions and he passes them on to John. Garfield! I don't know how you knew that meteor was going to crash down to Earth, but you shoved me aside just in time. <laughs> and earlier, you guessed who'd win that soccer match, and you even knew the final score. <gasps> Is it possible you've become the cat who can predict the future, future, future? Hmm. How did I know you were going to say that? Why? The scientific community has been rocked by reports of a cat that can predict the future. In the last seven days, Garfield Cat has predicted the outcome of the American World Series, the outcome of the Indianapolis 500 motor race, and the outcome of the legendary Kentucky Derby. He also amazingly predicted that those three events, usually held months apart, would all, for some reason, take place in the same week. But perhaps the cat's most impressive forecast came to You're famous, Garfield. I don't know how you do it. Tonight, Garfield's powers will be tested on a special telecast of the TV series Somebody's Got Talent. If he can indeed predict the future, he will win one million dollars. <laughs> 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 That's right! We'll win one million dollars! I'll win one million dollars. I'm going to get ready to go down to the station. Come on, Odie! Ready to go, Squeak? I'll meet you down there, Garf. There's something I gotta do first. Suit yourself. Just make sure you're there to give me the predictions so I'll pass their test. John probably thinks I'll spend the whole million on lasagna, but <laughs> that's silly. I'll spend half on ravioli. I realized something. I realized I'd never watched the end of this episode. Here we go, guys. When we return home, we'll have a million bucks. I'll have a million bucks. I need to know what happens in the end so I'll know what to tell Garfield is gonna happen. What? Episode deleted? That can't be. I, I must have accidentally hit the delete button. It's gone. What am I gonna do if I can't watch the end of this episode? I know! This episode is on right now! It is! You're watching it, right? Well, then I can watch it. I just need to turn to the channel. The Garfield Show will not be seen, so we can bring you tonight's special edition of Somebody's Got Talent! No, oh, no! We've been preempted! The show's not on! Quick, call the station and complain! <laughs> Oh, Yawfield's yeah, gonna be so mad. And right now, that's the only thing I can predict. And now, 
now the host of Somebody's Got Talent, Dr. Whipple. Uh, good evening. As usual, I'm joined tonight by the lovely actress, Kate Turkey Baster. I vote no. Not yet. Wait until there's an act on stage. And also with us is the famous food critic, Eddie Gourmand. Hello, world! That's right. I'm talking to each and every one of you. Ready to go on, Garfield? No. Where's my mouse? Tonight, our first contestant is a local cat who claims to be able to predict the future. I vote yes! Not yet. We've arranged a special test, which of course he will fail, because it's impossible to predict the future. I just knew you'd say that. I vote no. You stay out of this. I have every right to say what I want to say. Well, I when do we vote? It's talking. It's you don't know second. what you're talking well, how about. How did you know that? that? This is not All I right. Say, and I can even Come talk on. about food if I want. Can I get a word in here, please? <laughs> Gotta get there. No. <laughs> no. Garfield will be asked to predict which of the 52 playing cards I will draw from the deck. If he's right, he will win one million dollars. <laughs> and just to make things interesting, if Garfield is wrong, his owner, Mr. Arbuckle, will be dropped into this <laughs> vat containing 10 tons of rancid cottage cheese. I voted for soft frozen yogurt. Ooh, I love soft frozen yogurt. All right, Garfield. For one million dollars, what card did I pick? Squeak, <laughs> uh, uh. where are you? You have 15 seconds, Garfield. Squeak, how could you abandon me like this? I'm gonna have to just take a wild guess. I'll pick the three of clubs. <laughs> Huh? Uh-oh. I'm just gonna have to guess. Uh, Jack of Diamonds? Time's up, Garfield. What card am I holding? <sighs> the Jack of Diamonds? No, I'm sorry. It was the Three of Clubs. Oh. <sighs> <sighs> Is John mad at you? No, not really. He did say, though, that the only thing he's going to feed me for the next year is rancid cottage cheese. Hey, Squeak, how did you make those accurate predictions? I've been watching the Garfield show. What? This show. It's on this great channel I found on the TV. Look. Whoa. Is John mad at you? You've just been watching this episode? Uh, squeak, when I get my hands uh -oh. on you, yeah. Don't hurt me, Garfield. I'm sorry. 